Hello, and welcome back. It's a boy Yahya from VR Division. Today, we're going to continue working on our apartment from Franz Sylvester Architectos. I love this one and I can't wait to finish it. So without further ado, let's get started. Click on a box, make a box, I mean a wall. Yeah, so this length 30, it looks like 30. And let's make it 190 and it's looking nice. Let's make another box for this part here. So I click on this corner and I will drag to this corner. Press S to snap to this corner. Then release my mouse to snap to here. Looking good. Just make sure this is set 20. And let's just keep always the numbers little rounded. So I will press right click to switch from like this mode wherever we are here to selecting this. And I press on this vertex so i'm zooming here first of all we want to toggle our selection lock it used to be just space to do that but now i don't know the default it changed in a way but i changed this to be space because i love this and it allows me to click anywhere like here on that vertex and snap it here but in order to snap it here we need first to activate the x and y gizmo constraints so click on that Press, hold, and release your mouse here. And our wall is perfectly placed with this one here. I press E, then press Shift and A to rotate, so 90 degrees. Make a copy of that wall. Press space again, press S. Make sure we have X and Y plane selected. Then do this. And if you don't have this, you need to right click somewhere in your menu and you need to enable axis constraints. I have axis constraints and the layers and my own toolbar. I can't live without these. So they're very important. Now I click box again, disable snapping and let's do from here to here. So 100. It doesn't matter actually, this room, I don't want to model it. So let's just keep things as they are for now. I'm thinking if we should either make this little smaller or just keep it going. I'm gonna keep it going. So I convert this to edit poly and press on this here face and I will press on X and drag to this point here, okay? And from here, I spectate like this could be 40 centimeters. So I'll go to extrude and I'll extrude 40 centimeters. I will select one, then select these vertices. So switching one will enable the vertex mode, press space and move this. So it's like little close to our reference. This could be like 35. Yep. So let's make it 35 and do another extrude 40. Looks okay. I will press shift. By the way, I'm walking you through all of this. In a way, I'm just trying to teach you the shortcuts I use in 3ds Max and the process. So there are many ways you can create these objects here. And here's one of them. So I'm going to press shift and control, click and drag. That will take that face only. You can put it here if you like. Let's detach this or clone it to an object. Okay. And select three the border selection, press shift and move, this will extrude, okay? So that's around 280 units. And you can tell if you look this here, you can see like on the y-axis, we are moving this to 280, almost 280. And we can cap this and you can do that from here. So here we have cap or alt P, the shortcut for that. Let's make another wall, 280, 10 centimeters, 600 units for now. And let's move these units here, or this wall here. So it's slightly more than 600 units. You can add a little poly modifier on top of this if you like. Press 4, select these faces, then press Alt, deselect these faces. So you just have one face selected, but I wanted to do that from the top view. So I don't go this and select it. So on top view, you can do this basically, right? Boom. And you can extrude if you like, which is like 10, 12, 
So let's do 12. Let's do 10. So 610. I will take this. I have a shortcut to set the pivot to the center of my object. So I'm going to press that shortcut, which is numpad zero on my uh, keyboard. And I will just move this wall here, put it somewhere here. Let's press four, select this face, do an extrusion. We want 10 units, select this face, and we want to bring it to this point. Because I want to detach this sooner or later, I'm just gonna detach it from now. Press Ctrl and Shift, move it all the way here, okay? Then select this, the border, press Shift, and let's see if we snap, it's like 453 units, which is fine. And if you want, you can close this cap, but it does not really matter. All right, so I will click on this wall again, move it and rotate it. Press A and rotate, so it's like... When you press A, you will enable the angle snap toggle and you can set the radius for each little mouse move you do. So it's set to five units now. I have a shortcut to remove loops, which is X in my case. If I show you that, type hotkeys and type X. X is global search by default, as far as I remember, but I like to set it to remove loop. And I will press space and S and then click and then move this here. But before I do that, I will press on F7, sorry, F8 to enable the plane and click, move it here, then move this to this point which is like 120. There you go. Press four and move this all the way here. So 362 or 360, it doesn't really matter. Oh, I clicked on UVW map by mistake. It's okay. So select this, move it here as a copy, go to the top view, go to here, convert this to edit poly. And now let's just eyeball things so we finish fast. Select this face, extrude, by 10 units, perfect. Select this one, extrude 140 units. Press Ctrl, select all of this, press Ctrl and Shift and Y here, and then move it. So this is new object, press zero to center the pivot on that. So I just want to make sure that they are perfectly aligned. I press three to select my border and move it all the way here. And I will cap this because we want to cap it. Here we have a closet. All right, we're getting there. So let's select this object. This object, actually. It's easier to select. Rotate it. We want to rotate it on the 90 degrees, on the Z-axis. And let's just put it here. And here we have some sort of very small closet. But I think this is like fake or something, but it's within the design because it extends all the way. So let's preserve that. I like that detail. So it's 10 centimeters. We do that. And I press one, select here, move this all the way here, right? And this is an opening for a bathroom. And I think it is the same as the other bathroom. Could be 80. And I place these like as placeholders. And let's just select this and do another 10. And they are perfectly aligned. Let's select this. We're nearly done with the walls. We need to do the doors and whatnot, but that's okay. Is it easy? So I think this is like 120. So if we move this object here and click here, 120, 130. So another 10, select these and move them here. Select this face, press on extrude, we want 15. And I'm gonna click here as well. I'm gonna click another extrude, we want 30, 35. And we need to make sure that these two objects are aligning, okay? So we can either move this or the other one. So we can select this. I'm gonna select this one and move it like slightly on the X axis. So. Actually, I've decided to move this instead. So let's do that. I think I made it 15 instead of 20. So now I can measure this. Now it's 20. I think it's much better. 
Here we have a pillar, so let's do that. Click, release, drag. But when you drag, don't forget to press S to snap on the same height. All right, now we need to add the doors basically between the walls and we want to take a look at our references first. Did we take any reference of the doors? Looks no, but it looks like the doors goes all the way from the floor to the ceiling. Unless I am mistaken, we need to check the reference again. So by looking at the pictures, you can see this is the one of the parts we've been making. So the door goes all the way from here to here. I know it might be a little hard to focus with this courser. <laughs> Sorry, but I love it. And the same for this part here. So this is good because we don't need to have these connections between all the walls because that is painful sometimes. So good to know. However, if you go back to the references, I thought here we could have some sort of pillar going from here to here, but also no, we don't. It's one big, nice window. As I said, guys, I love these Vester for their minimal designs. So nice. Here are the two doors. They rotate these two. So we had enough look at our reference. Let's get back to work. Since I said earlier, I will detach all the walls later. So let's just do that from now and know that we're done with it. So I'm selecting these parts and then deselecting these parts. And I have shortcut D to detach. Select this, detach. And rule of thumb, the way you detach your elements, you want to make sure like when you have point A to point P, this is always the best way to detach. And whenever we have a break, like this, we avoid these. And when we have something like this C, I would say, it's not preferable. This will be very important for higher quality reflections and higher quality global illumination, since we're using Lumen. And if you're going to bake your lights, that is even slightly more complex. I'm not gonna say complex, but you need to detach your pieces into even smaller meshes. So in this case, we're lucky we're using Lumen, so I can select all of this click detach, but if we were light baking our stuff, we would select these two faces and maybe detach them from these two because they all will share the same light map UVs. If you have like all of these, you will get really bad shadows. So that's why we detach our meshes if we're baking the lights or if we're working with Lumen. But how we detach them is little different. And if you have questions here, you want more explanation, let me know in the comments. I'm more than happy to cover it. So, clicking here, I have shortcut to, to close these. Notice if you do cap like this, you still need to click here and connect these two. But I can't imagine 3ds Max without these tools. They're called Rapid Tools. And Rapid Q Cap, I have a shortcut for that. Number two, when I press it, it will just close this for me, which is beautiful but I don't want them, so. I'm thinking of removing this as well. So all the doors, they go from floor to ceiling. Maybe the height of 280 could be very high. It's okay, we will see that in Unreal Engine and modify based on that. Again, all of this is for practice. And notice here, it looks like I missed an important detail. Here we have a column that I saw in the pictures. Let me show you this one here in the corner. So let's do that. I'm glad we saw it. Let's click here, click this guy. Actually, it's easier. Move it, make a copy, press space, S, move it to this corner. So select both of these and move them just a little bit. We don't want this little opening here. Like then select this, move it here and select this to here. There we go. So for these windows, I will add the remaining walls. So click box S from this point to this point and set the height to something like 90 should be good. The same from this point to this point, 90. If we want to increase it, we will see and the same here. So let's do 90 and let's do 90. So 
there is little difference between these here. Let's just make sure this is 25 centimeters. Okay. So this should be also 25. So we do it 25 legs and now it's perfectly aligned. This means that our little pillar here, we can just make it 25 by 25 to make it easier to arrange the wall meshes we have. And the same we can do here. So we can set this to 25 and reduce the width a little bit. Let's put this here. Control C, my shortcut or convert to edit poly. And the reason I do that is because I want to go to vertex mode, select these and click and drag to this. So there we go. Now we have most of the things done. Ah, oh, there we go, we have wall. I knew I forgot something. Let's move this here and add edit poly or edit mesh. Doesn't matter. So we can have this place for the closet. Now, the next step would be making the floor of the project. Let's just make sure all the walls are got the correct height because these, they look like they don't. So we can select them and fix them. Do this. Add edit poly on top of multiple objects that will allow you to edit multiple objects. Sometimes I'm gonna break my rule. It's okay to have this. It's not really complex as mesh, but rule of thumb, just don't have all of your house as one mesh. If it's possible to break your house into or apartment into multiple pieces like this, do it. Next items on the list are the closets, the windows, the doors, and the floor. We said we're gonna do the floor, so let's do that before we finish today's lesson. I will simply just make a little big nice box. Little big. How is that possible? So I'll make the thickness of this 20 centimeters. Okay. From this point to this point. And we can either extend it to this point. And I think I may just do that. So click here and do this. But if you don't want to do that, you can press Shift S or Swift Loop. Select this edge here, align them together. Select this face, extrude like this. And there you go. Here we got the floor of our apartment. All right. In the next lesson, we're going to create the windows, the doors and the closets. I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And if you have any questions, if you want me to cover anything specific, leave that in the comments. And I will see you very soon. Take care.